Hey guys, been a few days, been uh, doing some temporary work. I'm a little beat up, but no worse for wear, I guess. Everything's taken care of and the bills are paid. So that's good. Um, I, I, I realized this while I was working that, you know, the situation wasn't tenable for long term and it made sense actually yesterday when I realized that the people I was working for, although it's a legitimate business and everything is on the up and up, it's not, uh, I'm not made to be there and it's mainly to do with the fact that I'm hopefully along the same lines as you guys, a painfully honest person, not, not a, not a, not a mean person, but you know, straightforward. And I ended up actually having a pretty drawn out conversation about end times things with uh, one of the other guys that was working there. And uh, he was only on for one day and I, I couldn't figure out honestly why I was there because normally when, when uh, job opportunities fall away from my grasp, it's something that, um, it's something that kind of makes sense. This time, so many opportunities that I'm qualified for that I, by all rights, should have had a shot at just were taken. Uh, and so first that leads me to know that they weren't, they weren't the right ones, which, you know, reasonable. Um, but also that I, I apparently had to have this conversation with this guy about the nature of what's coming um, because he is a believer. He's just, you know, on the, on the, the tepid side, you know, I, I, I'm always really happy to meet somebody that can control their tongue. That's about as far as their faithful expression goes, unfortunately, like they don't talk about it, but he was asking me questions and strangely enough, the, the conversation just went right to, you know, what I believe and faith and all that stuff. So of course, you know, I'm, I'm a loud mouth, so I'm going to talk about it. And then it, then it dawned on me this morning that, you know, every single job opportunity I've ever had, because I'm, I'm an exemplary employee and I, I'm not to, to toot my own horn. You know, I, I definitely, uh, I'm definitely a sinner and, guilty of, of many things, but I work it out with him as best I can. I try to do the things that I tell you guys you should do, ask for forgiveness, you know, have him wash your feet, um, do everything I can to honor him with, with, with my, my words and deeds. And it, it seems to me looking back now that every single job opportunity I've ever had always ends after some significant communication regarding him, his plan, what's going on in the world, whether it's evangelical, whether I'm talking to an unbeliever or whether it's um, eschatological, whether I'm talking about the times we live in towards the end here uh, with somebody that is seemingly completely oblivious about it. And the, the sad reality is, and actually I wanted to make this video about evangelizing and, and, and um, witnessing and you know, uh, doing apologetics work, basically defending the word, uh, either to Christians or to non-Christians who are perhaps wanting to believe, but have some really strong misconceptions. <sighs> considering the lateness of the hour, considering we're in a country that's surrounded by crosses and churches and all these things, where even though I do not believe that those churches actually teach the word, it is a daily reminder that the Lord is here, he's with us, and that we should be going in that direction. Uh, the chances of these conversations going in a way that you would want them to go are quite, quite low. Um, not only that, when they do go through, because people are addicted to the social nature of, especially again, life here in the United States, the, the, the social club aspect of just about every, you know, gathering or get together. That's what I consider church to be, by the way, it's a social club. You know, it's where people get together to commiserate about the, the hard, the, the, the difficulties of being in a first world country, which are really not difficult considering we're all, we're all rich based on a world standard. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in between jobs. It's been a really difficult, however long it's been since I've been working, I don't even know anymore. And, uh, you know, we're still, we're not running out. We're not, we're not destitute. We have indoor plumbing. We have electricity. We have all these things. So even in spite of what it has even seemed to me, who I consider myself a fairly aware person as to what's going on in the world, at least regarding what the word says. Um, uh, I've never been without, he has always taken care of us and kept us. I mean, and again, in terms of how the history of the world has gone very rich, we're, we're exceptionally rich. So in my experience, when people do become evangelized and, and actually do accept the gospel and do become believers this day and age in this country, especially, and I'm sure in other westernized countries as well, um, people are quickly subsumed into some sort of church superstructure. 
you know, they're dunked in water and not explained really why they have to do it other than everybody else here did it. So you have to do it too to make them feel better. That's what baptism is, by the way, anymore, guys. There is zero need for it. We are immediately baptized, made one, submerged, if you will, with the Spirit the moment we believe. That is the baptism that counts. That's the one that Paul was talking about, the one that, you know, makes you one with the Lord and with the Father and the Spirit, not any washing of your skin, you know, um... I, I, I had a, I had an experience and I'm not going to speak too deeply on it because, you know, if he ever does watch this, I don't want him to be offended, but you know, his, uh, his main gripe was the fact that I don't sound like a Christian. And, uh, in the end, you know, he had to, he had to basically use my, my, uh, my everyday sin, which I am, I am always regretful for. And I have improved. I am, I can't lie and say that I'm the same person I was however many years ago when I was dealing with him, but you know, I helped him come to find and understand the Lord. He came from a Mormon background. If you're watching, you know exactly who I'm talking to, bud. But um, the fact that such tepid and minimal sin was one of the ma major excuses to denounce me uh, shows me that that really wasn't the whole, that wasn't it. It was, it was the depth of my seriousness and the fact that I don't compromise. Um, I don't even compromise when it comes to my own sin. And most Christians today absolutely adore compromise. It's actually an American tradition to get along to get along. You're, 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 you're surrounded by it wherever you are. It's lukewarmness to the T. You know, they want to, uh, they want to singularly uh, address prophecy on only one angle. They don't want to see the depths of it. They don't want to accept that the, the Bible is ever dragging us deeper into meaning each time we read and understand something because you can read something once and sort of kind of get it and read the direct description of it, but like the parable of the sower does not make sense until you've actually watched people fall away, and I have. I had a live-in caretaker situation with an old woman who uh, had Alzheimer's, and I swear with the with the very last bit of her mental capacity that she had, she decided instead of continuing on in faith as she goes into this dark tunnel of her brain not working, she decided to reject him and became very evil towards anybody who reminded her of it, myself included. Um, it, was, it was a terrible situation. The Lord got us out of it. He kept us from it. He knew what she was going to do, but he also, I guess, wanted me to to see this and understand it and, and realize that we do not live in the growth phase. We live in the attrition phase. We live in the time where people are so addicted to their own selfish needs and wants. And I have been guilty of this too. I know this. It's it's being knocked out of my hands because it has to be. Otherwise, what's coming will take us all down, myself included. And I, I, I have determined to not let it. I've determined to make sure my family is ready. I have the most wonderful, caring, best friend of a wife. I, I, I couldn't even imagine what it's like trying to find a woman right now. Or, or a partner in general that is equally as serious. Again, if you're watching this, I've told so many truths that I would I would empty pews. I would make a church very much, very much go broke in a very short period of time by telling the truth. The, a lot of the reasons why things like, by the way, guys, why once saved, always saved exists, why the, the, the pre-tribulational rapture exists is because it's a warm blanket. It coddles you with this notion that uh, you're not really going to have to deal with the hard things in life. But there have been so many times, and I actually just was reminded of this today, there have been so many times where, you know, in, in, in the past, not too long ago necessarily, but, you know, the communist countries out there, they killed Christians in mass. They, they killed them quickly and, and viciously sometimes. Um, Satan has different plans for different countries and different ways of dealing with believers. And, you know, in some places where there's not a high Christian concentration and you become a believer, he will immediately try to scare you away from it. And if you don't listen, he will kill you so that you are not able to affect others around you with your positive growth and faith. That's the reality in most places. That is not the norm. The United States and the Western nations that leave Christians alone for the time being is Satan's plan is not to tear you down with um, direct violence and evil in, in your face, you know, like the, the blatant kind. He's trying to tear us down with greed avarice, jealousy, you know, um, again, social conditioning is what he's after here because, well, the reason is, is his, his antichrist, his, his son is going to be starting his, you know, big time, lukewarm, nasty, ungodly, fake Christianity type religion from here and then spreading it out to the rest of the world. So there'll be a short time where Christians aren't necessarily being killed in mass, although they will definitely feel pressures they've never felt before. Um, and we're being made ready for that. 
So this is a bit of a ramble, to be honest with you, but so many of these things are happening all at once into such a, at such a rapid pace. It's, 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 it's quite frightening to be honest with you, but that lukewarmness, it's, it's, it's a heck of a drug people. It's stronger than any other drug I've heard of. And the reason is, is it, ins it inspires legalism. It inspires arrogance, you know, pride, people that are proud of holding on to once saved, always saved. I'm sorry, you guys are fools. You are fools. You are fools to think that the Bible is not telling you exactly what's going to happen if you decide to take the mark. Any of you watching this that believe that nonsense, once you get in there and you actually see them requiring the mark, because it's going to come before they require it, but once you see them require it and you go, oh, well, I'm saved no matter what, and you actually rest on that, you're done for. And we need to be very much vocal about these things. If it costs you a friendship, if it costs you a family member, that's a notch in your belt. That is... That is that's eternal rewards, people. That's sacrifice. That is hating your life. That is, that is doing, that is doing your, that is doing what you're supposed to do. I, I don't know how else to put it. The Lord was literally alone, especially after three and a half years of walking with, with supposedly twelve of his closest confidants. They all abandoned him. Yes, they came back, but in his time of need, he was most abandoned. And you guys should absolutely expect that. And that is Satan's absolute goal all the time. If he can't get you physically. He will make sure you're as ostracized as possible and hating your life. And you need to, you need to accept that that's more often the case than it is not. So this is just a little catch up. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. I'm going to try and do a couple of lessons here real quick. I'm just sitting at home. So they're going to upload slow because I have terrible reception, but it is what it is. And I'm going to do what I can while I have this time available. I have a job uh, interview coming up tomorrow and I have a feeling it's going to go the way that interviews usually go. Because once I get an interview, I'm I'm blessed to be able to get through them. And um, I'm going to do everything I can to keep going. Let me know if you guys want a Sunday service type thing. Because I would love to do a live stream, even if it's just a few of us. You know, that is the definition of two or more. Matthew 18, 20, where two or more gather in my name, so so shall he be there. Yeah, that's that's what this is. It's harsh and it's sharp sometimes. Because it literally is me telling you exactly what you don't likely want to hear. But it's what you need to hear, just exactly the way I think the Lord would have it and the way that he ran his ship. So anyway, like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, for those that have been praying for me, it's 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 happening. Everything's going through. Um, the hard part about all of this is learning how to be happy when it just won't stop raining. And uh, I'm bad at it, but I'm trying. So. Thanks, you guys, for sticking with me for these last few days. I feel like I could do this forever if I was given the opportunity, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, but we'll see what happens. You know, if this Sunday service were to work out, you know, and I were to get, I don't know, a certain number of folks that just want to hear some truth, I want to do a Q&A as well. I want to make sure that you guys have some say. I believe that's how church was originally. It wasn't just a guy talks and you all listen and, you know, cry and pray and walk out feeling like everything's fine. No, I want you guys to have questions. I want you to to ask the hard questions and I want to answer them because that's, I think, what I've been training for. Anyway, bless you guys. Uh, we will talk to you soon.